Today we have a very interesting functional differential equation. We're looking for a function f of x satisfying the condition that f of x times its derivative, that's f prime, equals the very same function evaluated at 2 times x. So that's a pretty interesting structure, but immediately it hits us with a hint. We could make a reasonable guess as to what kind of function would work here. So we're going to try a guess and then work towards generalizing that guess. And once we've generalized it into one function or one special type of function, then we can work towards proving that the solutions to the differential equation are all of that kind. And maybe we can find some specific solutions that are different from our general kind of solution as well. So that's our strategy. Let's first try that no-brainer solution. We could try the function f of x defined as the exponential function e to the x. Because in that case, we have the derivative f prime being equal to e to the x again. It's that meme where she thinks she can change them. Anyway, so we take the function e to the x and we multiply it by its derivative e to the x and we get e to the 2 times x, which is indeed f of 2 times x as per our definition. Okay, so the no-brainer works. And let's generalize the solution a little bit, shall we? Let's try defining the function f of x as alpha times e to the x by alpha, where alpha is some non-zero real number. In this case, the derivative f prime equals alpha times e to the x by alpha. And because of the chain rule, we have a factor of one by alpha as well. So some cancellation and we get e to the x by alpha. This implies that on multiplying the function that is e to the x by alpha and its derivative e to the x by alpha, we get alpha times e to the 2x by alpha, which is again f of 2x as per our definition of the function f of x. So this looks fine. It looks pretty cool. But are these solutions, are these solutions defined by f of x the only solutions to our differential equation? See, here's the thing. You good folks watching are pretty smart. I know you're smart. Concrete evidence of that is the fact that you're watching this video right now. And in case you're a long-term viewer or even better, a subscriber to the channel, I'm pretty sure a few points have been added to your IQ here and there. So in case you haven't subscribed, this would be a very good time to do that. Added benefits include uh, growing some hair on your chest as well as adding a few inches down there to your package. Because there is nothing more masculine than solving cool math problems. I believe that's enough incentive. Anyway, coming back to the point of you being smart. You're smart, so immediately you notice that this cannot be the on these cannot be the only solutions to our differential equation. Why can't they be the only solutions? Well, they completely disregard the possibility of f of zero being zero. So let's modify our claim a, li a little bit. Let's say we're looking for solutions such that f of 0 is non-zero. And we want our functions to be nice and holomorphic. So let's say we have f of x is analytic. So our new claim or our new question is, given these stipulations, are the functions defined by alpha times e to the x by alpha, where alpha is a non-zero real number, the only solutions to our differential equation? We're about to find out just that. Because the function is holomorphic, that means we can expand it as a Maclaurin series. So let's take the function and write it in that form. That is, we have the sum over the non-negative integers k of x to the k divided by k factorial times the coefficients a sub k. Now what about the derivative? The derivative here would be f of x equal to the sum over k, now starting at 1 rather than infinity, 
because for k equal to 0, we have a sub 0 times x to the 0, which is a sub 0, and on differentiating with respect to x, we get a 0. And we're left with k times x to the k minus 1 divided by k factorial times a sub k. Now, k divided by k factorial would be k minus 1 factorial, correct? And we have x to the k minus 1 times a sub k. Now, we could restart our sum at k equal to 0, provided that we transform k minus 1 into k. So we have the sum over k, starting at 0 now, of x to the k divided by k factorial. Now, k minus 1 transformed into k, so k transforms into k plus 1, right? That's how it's going to work. So we have the series expansions for the function as well as, as well as its derivative. Now let's just plug these in straight into the differential equation. Okay, so the differential equation was f of x times f prime of x equal to f of 2x. So let's apply the series expansions now. Terribly sorry about that. For f of x, I'm going to name the index variable as n. So we have the sum over the non-negative integers n of x to the n divided by n factorial times a sub n. And for f prime, let's name the index variable as m. So we have the sum over the non-negative integers m of x to the m divided by m factorial times a sub m plus 1. And this equals for f of 2x, I'm going to leave it as the index k. So we have the sum over k of 2 to the k times x to the k divided by k factorial times a sub k. Now, distributing the multiplication over the addition operators, we have the double sum over n and m of what exactly? Well, we have x to the n plus m divided by n factorial times m factorial times a sub n times a sub m plus 1. And this thing here equals the sum over k of 2 to the k times x to the k divided by k factorial times a sub k. Now let's try to rephrase the sum on the left-hand side by making use of this n plus m term. So we could write this as the sum over the non-negative integers k of x to the k times the sum over m plus n starting at k of a sub n times a sub m plus 1. Terribly sorry about that divided by n factorial times m factorial. And yeah, that, that definitely covers all the terms on the left-hand side. And I believe this is a result attributed to Cauchy, if I remember correctly. But whenever in doubt in mathematics, just blame some result on Cauchy, Euler, or even Gauss. It's normally one of those three. So this time we're gonna, we're gonna blame Cauchy. And on the right-hand side, we have the sum over k of 2 to the k times x to the k divided by k factorial times a sub k. Okay, cool. Now let's make a slight modification to this little sum here by eliminating one of the index variables. Let's eliminate the n index. So we have the sum over k of x to the k times the sum over n, starting at 0, ending at k. Yeah, that, that should do it. Of a sub n times a sub k minus n plus 1 divided by n factorial times k minus n factorial. And this equals the sum over k of 2 to the k divided by k factorial times a sub k times x to the k. So what we can do here is compare the coefficients of the x to the k terms on both sides, which gives us this nice recurrence relation for the a sub k terms. We have the sum over the non-negative integers n starting at 0, ending at k, of a sub n times a sub k minus n, terribly sorry about that, plus 1 divided by n factorial times k minus n factorial equal to 2 to the k times a, to a sub k divided by k factorial. So that means given a naught, which is of course f of 0, 
we can determine the a sub k for k greater than or equal to 1 using this nice recurrence relation. Now recall earlier in the video that I added the stipulation that f of 0 should be non-zero. Otherwise, we would have a sub 0 equal to 0, and by the recurrence relationship, we would have a sub k equal to 0 for all k greater than or equal to 0, and this would imply that the function f of x would just be a big fat zero, which is of course of little to no use to us. And now for the important part. We're gonna verify that given our stipulations, that is f of zero being non-zero and the function being holomorphic, that the solutions to our differential equation are all of the form f of x equal to alpha times e to the x by alpha, where alpha is again a non-zero real number. Well, we definitely have the holomorphic bit sorted out and we do have a naught equal to f of zero being alpha. So that means using f of zero, we can define the solutions to our differential equation as f of x equal to f of zero times e to the x by f of zero. So yes, indeed, all the solutions satisfying the two stipulations for our differential equation are of this very form. Now, we could find other solutions, for example, solutions that don't need f of zero to be non-zero, like the function g of x defined as sine of beta x divided by beta. Because in this case, if you differentiate, we get sine beta x, uh, no, we get cosine beta x times beta cancellation of betas, so we have g prime of x equal to cosine beta x. And once you multiply out these things, we will get sine of 2 beta x. In this case, we have g of 0 equal to 0, but this function here is indeed a solution to our differential equation, which is pretty cool. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. I'd love to hear about more solution developments from you guys as well. Thank you. See you next time.